there everyone hope you guys can hear me perfectly fine i seem to have misplaced my microphone which is unfortunate but i'm sure it'll turn up <laughs> anyway today we're going to be talking about set fire to the gods by sarah rash and kristen simmons this is a novel that has been labeled a blend of the gladiator and avatar the last airbender um i have to say i was thoroughly pleased with it in the long run, I think it's a good book, don't get me wrong. Um, I really did like how the story moved forward. I think um, some of my issues stem from the fact that the novel is a little slow in the beginning. It's a little hard to get into. I kind of wish that they had just um, hurried up <laughs> the story just a little bit because I feel like it does lag initially uh, for about that first uh, 30, 30, that first third, you know, the first third of the book, I do think it, it lags. Um, but I understand why it lags. I understand the author's intent. They are building a world here. They are building up dynamics with the characters. They are building up the characters, period. So I do think it is uh, redeemable how the story moves forward. But I just, it's just a little too slow for my taste for me to just thoroughly enjoy it and to be wowed by it because I loved this premise. I do think the premise of the novel was really interesting, and I do like the characters. You know, overall, this is a good story, and I did thoroughly enjoy it. Another thing um, I kind of had an issue was the romance between Ash and Maddox. I feel like their romance is a little underdeveloped, and I'll explain why um, in a little bit. Let's talk about what I did like, first and foremost. You know, I do like the story. Once again, I can't say that enough. I do think it's an interesting blend of two different fandoms to create this story. And it really does focus a lot on the world building. Now, I do like the world building. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, you have not just four elements. You know, you don't just have earth, air, fire, water. You also have... Um, flora and you have biotis who talks to to the beast you know animals so i think the addition of these two uh i guess elements uh, i can't think of a better word for it two different aspects of elemental magic these two different magics i do think that they add a lot to the story but there's also soul magic as well, which I thought was another interesting aspect. You know, you have all these blends of fantasy and elemental magic, and they really do give the story tension. They do give the story and the world a lot of depth. You know, you really are able to understand the world that these characters are in, and I really do enjoy that. I did enjoy that quite a lot. Now, uh... Something else that I liked, sorry, my allergies are like killing me today. I couldn't even breathe this morning. <laughs> um, something else I did enjoy were Ash and Maddox. You know, these are two characters who at the core are very similar because deep down all they care about is the well-being well of their loved ones and their people. You know, they're kind of angry at their gods. Well, Maddox not so much, you know. His people are prospering while... Um, Ash's people, you know, I'm going to call them the, they're Kulans, C-K-U-L-A-N-S, um, from Kula, they are the Fire Nation. Their people are kind of suffering, uh, because the way the gods determine things is by gladiator matches. If your gladiator wins, you, you win the terms, and usually the terms is, the term of it are... You know, land, uh, fishing, property, coastal uh, agreements. So, he, the Fire Nation is kind of losing. So, her people are suffering. And she blames her god. You know, she thinks he's entering into all these matches. 
without any regard to his people. But, you know, as the story turns out, it's a little bit more complex than that. And that's another thing I enjoyed from the story. There are a lot of layers to the storytelling. And the authors, they don't just give you everything first and foremost. You know, they do trickle in um, some more history as the story evolves because these characters are unveiling a lot of mystery, you know, in their attempt to take down the gods, they are discovering that there is a lot more at play here. And that's something really interesting, you know, it raises the tension of the story, it does increase the momentum of the story, so it becomes very fast paced near the end. You know, that last half of the novel, I kind of just blew through it, uh, because it was so good, you know, I wasn't able to put it down, I wanted to know what was going to happen next, what's going to happen next? I had to know um, how things were going to play out, as little beats and bits and pieces kept coming to the forefront. And these, aus- these authors also ensure that the story is not um, predictable. That's the word I'm looking for. I liked the unpredictability of it. I thought it was incredibly interesting how the story was not predictable. I did not see things coming or going, you know. Revelation after revelation, my mind was kind of blown. And I just didn't see them coming. So I thought that was really cool. You know, if you're going to have a story, you have to keep it unpredictable. Sometimes predictability works. Uh, I just reviewed a book where one aspect of the story was incredibly predictable. I mean, you could see it a mile away, but it worked. Other times, it doesn't work. You read stories where you just like called it, but it doesn't really give you a sense of satisfaction. You're just like, I knew it. You know, like there's no sense of, ha, I knew it. You know, sometimes you knowing it gets you excited. Other times it doesn't. Um, In this novel, that didn't happen because it was completely unpredictable. I really didn't see where it was going. Like, the story has a clear direction. As it evolves, that direction changes with the evolution of the story. So, it doesn't lose the reader at all. You are on this journey with these characters. Um, You're in the midst of things as much as they are. You are discovering things as much as they are. And that's really what is interesting regarding the story. Now, what I have to say about the characterization, uh, and I already started saying this earlier, um, I do think the romance between Ma'ash and and Maddox was a little underdeveloped. Now, that being said, I do think their dynamics are well done. I do think their dynamics are strong. I say this because you definitely can see the camaraderie grow between them. It's not far-fetched to see them end up where they do end up as um, romantic figures. However, I think their dynamic... uh, what really is strong about it is their camaraderie, their friendship, how they grow stronger with one another, how they become such good friends. So I'm hoping that the next novel, because you can bet I'm going to read it, um, especially after this, the way this one ends, I'm hoping the next novel will develop their relationship just a little bit more so that their romance is a little bit more tangible to the reader. Now, like I said earlier, they are different characters, um, but their cores are the same, which is another reason why their friendship works out so well. Ash, what I think is really cool about Ash is um, she's not a fighter. She knows how to fight because her mother has trained her to, but she's not a fighter. She's a fire dancer. To see her go from being a fire dancer to a gladiator was to a rebel leader as well and in a sense was incredibly interesting like her whole development was so well done it was clearly well thought out and i do like how she incorporates a lot of her agility of fire dancing into her fighting skill you know i think it works a lot to balance out her personality and it really does say a lot about her fiery personality how flexible she is how passionate it is how passionate she is it says a lot and in a very great way 
Now, as for Maddox, um, he was, you know, he was undivine, so his father kind of threw him out into the street, and he was found by a divine family uh, who lost everything to a gambling parent. And what he does is he fights street fights. So he is a fighter. He knows how to street fight. He knows how to calm the crowd uh, with the help of his adopted brother into thinking he is divine. But he is a fighter. And, uh, you know, with Ash, you can see the fire and the fire inside her, that passion. So her progression into a gladiator isn't wholly unexpected. But with Maddox, I think the reason their friendship is so good is because he's so, he's tempered. He's very calm. He's very caring, gentle. He's very considerate as far as a person goes. He wants to do what's best for everyone around him. And I think that's really empowering. I think it's very great and powerful to see this, you know, big guy as just with just such a soft heart. And I really do like how that kind of just just juxtaposes, sorry, juxtaposes uh, how he is always such a brutal street fighter. So I think it's a really good balance of characterization. You know, he has such a soft side to him, but it is, you know, it's not a weakness, him being in touch with his emotions. It's, it's more of a strength, you know, it allows him to be a better fighter because he's not just fighting for himself. He's fighting for people he cares about. He's fighting for his loved ones. And that really just makes an impact with the reader. And overall, it makes him incredibly likable. I liked him a lot. Uh, I did like his journey through the story. I loved a lot, all, all the plot twists surrounding him. I was kind of mind blown. I was like, what? It was ultimately a good story. So this was the Fire to the Gods. I'm going to go ahead and give it four stars because it really did capture my attention. Um, I was able to stick with it. I just think the pacing in the first third of the novel, I think it could have been a little faster. I think it could have moved a little faster because there are parts that do move pretty fast, but then it slows down again. Um, So it's a little up, down, up, down before it stays up. So I just wish it had just started down and then slowly went up, 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 instead of going up, down, up, down. That would, that would have been my preference for the first third of the story. But ultimately, you know what? I really did enjoy it. So I highly recommend purchasing this book off of bookshop.org. A percentage of all proceeds do go to supporting local booksellers. If money is too tight, which I know for a lot of us, myself included, it is, I definitely recommend checking out this book from your local library. And I do hope you will support me by liking this podcast and subscribing to it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.